So you can drop off on a Monday, a Monday, a Monday is very, very good. Or you can drop off on a Tuesday, a Tuesday, a Tuesday, in fact, I wish you would. Or you can drop off on a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday is best. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. Most any day, you can be my guest. Any day you say, but the day of rest. Drop off the day that you think is best. Only stay away. A polite request. Oh, you can drop off on a cool day, a hot day, a wet day, whichever day you choose. Or you can drop off on a gray day, a May day, a pay day, and see if I refuse. And if you make it on a bleak day, a freak day, a week day, why well, you can be my guest. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. Beatitudes does the best they can, any day they can, a woman or a man. It is the best All throughout the week Keep you safe, they seek So we ask you, please Tell your family, come on Monday, a Monday, a Monday is very, very good And you can get groceries on Tuesday, a Tuesday, a Tuesday, in fact, I wish you would and Amazon can come on Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday is best. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. Woof, woof, woof. So this is the third class in our open office series. Today, we're gonna to wrap up word processing. Next weekend, we're gonna start on spreadsheets. So turn on your computers and let's get going. Hi, this is Robert Andrews, and this is the third of six classes for Beatitudes Tech Talks. We're talking about Open Office today, the word processing program. The next two classes after this, we will be talking about spreadsheets. The class after that, the sixth class, we'll be talking about the presentation software and how you can use it to create kind of a um, slideshow of family photos that you can send out to your family. So today we are going to we're going to crinkle paper. That's what we're going to do. So today we are going to insert date fields and page numbers, table of contents, header and footer, appendix, we're going to create a table and merge cells insert and delete rows in those cells, and use the spelling and thesaurus features. And um, we'll also talk a little bit about how different ways to alphabetize your group of text. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is open open office. We're going to click on the little blue circle with two flying white doves. And we're going to say, again, we have text document, spreadsheet, presentation, and we're not going to talk too much about drawing, database, or formula. And I'll, 
aren't going to talk about templates either. So let's open a text document. So I'm going to click on view so you can see right now it starts here, but it goes, as long as I continue typing gibberish, it goes off the page and scrolls and then back and then. So we're going to click view, zoom. And I always prefer it to be page width. If I do width and, width and height, it fits both of them in, and that's just not usable. It's good for previewing your document, and you can even make changes here as you preview. Like if you say, okay, I want this to be font big. I want this to be big font. You can see what it looks like. But what I want to do is see what I'm typing. So I'm going to click View, Zoom. And I'm going to say, give me fit width. That will allow me to see from left side to right side of the page. Let's delete all of this. So I'm going to speed the camera up while I type here. Let's say, today we will talk about. I'm going to go back here in my bullets at the top of the page. Page field, page numbers, header, enter, appendix. Table of contents. We may find it by tables. Oh, table of contents is up there. Okay, so let's say tables, I'll merge, fills, insert, and delete rows in that table. Spelling, and these are us. Tools. Update. Date. Oh, I know what that was. This is bad design exclamation mark. Well, I'll explain what that means later. We're going to take a look at how to use toolbars. I'll have the uh, ties and ties. Oh, while we're on it, alpha. Ties. Note that this one that is misspelled has red underline on it. So that's a way, it's very subtly, there's an internal dictionary that it will compare and if it thinks that something is misspelled, it will suggest to you the better spelling. As soon as you correct it, that line goes away. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So first of all, let's, um, let's insert a header and footer because that will allow me to deal with these first two things. Um, let's change that again. Let's alphabetize. So we've typed up this list. It is in whatever random thought order, I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to go up here and click on Tools, and then Sort. Sort's just another word that, for alphabetize, but the reason they use Sort is because it also works with numbers, and numbers aren't alphabetical per se, they're sorted. And Alphabet alphabetization is actually sorted. So we're going to say tools sort. Now it does something interesting here. If I had tabs, let's say I had date field, talk about this first, page number, talk about this second, um, and I had tabs in between those, I could alphabetize on that second column. And I could even have a subsection. Let's say, let's say the second column was low priority, high priority, medium priority. Within that, I might want to section, want, might want to alphabetize on the word. So you can have multiple level sorts going on. I am not going to sort multiple times. I'm just going to sort one time on the first column. And different types, alphanumeric or numeric sort. Alphanumeric is another way to say alphabet. And I can go ascending or descending. I'm going to click OK. Now watch the text over on the left of the screen. And it's alphabetized that quickly. 
And the first one says alphabetize, so we can put a check mark by that and get it off the list. Okay, so now let's do, let's insert a header and a footer. I'm going to go ahead and check that off because that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to click on insert. And right here it is, header, footer. So there's our header. This is my header. I look down at the bottom and we have no footer. I'm going to click insert footer default again. And say this is my footer. Let's insert page numbers in our footer. Scroll down to the bottom. This is my footer. Now, I'm going to scroll back up again. Here, when I hit tab, you see it goes space, space, space. It goes about 10 letters every time I press the tab button. So it goes down here in my footer. It behaves a little bit differently. I'm going to hit tab. It goes to the middle, tab again, and it goes clear to the end. And there's a reason for that. Let me hit backspace two times. One, two, and let's type click on the beginning of this text and say, this is my story, and then tab, and that text goes to the center. Let's say by Robert Andrews and hit tab again. And it goes to the end. Now I'm going to type the word page, P A G E space. And I'm going to say insert. Let's find it. Fields. Insert different types of fields. Now here you can insert date, time, page number, page count, subject title, author. It will get these, this information from uh, other settings, so we're not going to bother about that. But we're going to say the page number. Insert field page number, page one, space of, space, insert field page count. Now, I'm going to click this, and it says page one of one. Right now, that looks like it's doing the same thing, but it's not. Uh, let's copy this and paste it 28 times. Paste, 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 paste. Okay, so here we are. We've pasted it a lot of times. And we have created, this is page eight of nine pages. So we have nine pages total. If we go down here, we can see this is the last page, page nine of nine. And if we go clear, let's go halfway. So I can look here on the side and I can see my cursor is taking me halfway. See the numbers change? This is page now four of nine. Go all the way up to the top, nearly to the top, it's page two of nine. All the way to the top, it's page one of nine. So that's how page numbers work. I'm going to click here. Because I, whoops, no, I'm going to click here. I only need one of these. So let me show you another neat little trick. So I've clicked once here, and now I'll scroll down a bit. And I'll hold down the shift button and click again. And it highlights everything between the first click and the second shift click. So now I can delete. And you can see it brings it up to there. If I do that again, I can um, change font size or font text. I'm going to hit delete. And now I'm just, uh, let's see how many pages we have left. 
still nine pages. That's interesting. I don't see that we do. You see? Now, <clears throat> it showed page one of nine, page two of nine. It took a while to count the pages. So it can now see we have six pages left. If I go up to the top, it will now say page one of six. <coughs> but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click, hold, and drag. And you can see that selected text is following me right down as the page scrolls. So I'm not going to release the button yet. I'm going to just go up a little bit. And you can see this is changing. Now if I hit delete, that part's gone. So I'm going to, this is the last thing here. I'm going to click, go down to the bottom, and shift click. Highlights everything. Delete. You can see now we're back to page one of one. And here's my information. So, um, where was page numbers? Oh, page numbers is already checked. Okay. Um, date field. Robert's story. And this does the same thing. It does, it has only three tabs. Left justified, centered, and right justified. So I'm going to go back so that this says Robert's story. I'm going to hit tab twice. One, two. And now I'm going to insert a date field. No, I don't want format. I want insert fields. Date. Let's do space, space, space. And insert fields time. Now, see, this even gives us seconds. That's a little bit too granular, so I'm going to try something. I don't know if this will work or not. Right click, default formatting. Let's try fields. Ah, good. So click on right click, then go to fields. Gives me some different time formats. Let's say that I just want it to be. Nice and simple. I want it to say 8.01 a.m. Click OK. And there we are. And this, I can do the same thing. Let's go up to my date. Right click. Fields. And let's say I wanted to spell out the entire date. Now this is where I wrote down here bad design, and I might have seen something that will allow it to be a better design. See, although I've been talking for three minutes, the time hasn't changed. That's because this date and this time, they don't update dynamically. So if I right click on the date and go down to fields, this says time parenthesis fixed. I never noticed that before. Let's change it to time. Okay, it's at least changed to 802. We'll see if it changes in another minute or so. I would like it to be able to change the date and change the time every time I open a document, but it doesn't appear that that's the case. We'll come back to that. So let's, um, let's type in, check this later. All right, um, date field, we've done that. It's now 8.03, it doesn't look like it's gonna be good. Okay, so let me think of what we can do here. 
I'm going to go in. I'm going to get a different document just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go File Open, and here's my COVID. This is my COVID tracking spreadsheet. I'll be talking about that a little bit. Sixth class. We won't interpret the data. I'll just show you the formulas. But let's go. Let's go to my desktop. See if I can find something. Um, I'm looking for a Word document. Okay. okay, tell you what, let's do this. Let's go use this little drop down. Now it does just things a little different. If I use this drop down, I click File Open, and it's looking for files. I have all this along the left, but if I click this drop down at the top middle of the page, see, I get like my previous five subdirectories so I can go anywhere to any of these directories and let's go to this working directory click on it again and it gives me a path all the way back to the root directory plus my five most recent places I'm going to go back here to uh, I have desktop Dropbox active house home and each of these is a more granular Directory, and then I have Life of Gratitudes and Activity Documents. Click on Activity Documents, and let's go to the Garden Club. That's down here, A through G. Find Garden Club. And let's go to the roster. Well, okay. oh, this is a spreadsheet, darn it. Okay. Well, we'll actually talk about this a little bit more next week about how to how to merge shells as a little sneak preview. You can see this heading spreads across multiple cells. These have been colored. Um, over here, these are conditional formatting. I'll show you how to do that. For now, let's, get, let's find a document. File. Open. Now, see, it remembered the last place that I was. So let's go. Um, I think the dining committee is a Word document. Let's find that. Click on dining committee, membership. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have, this is a Word document. I'm gonna go ahead and modify this a little bit. And actually before I do that, before I destroy my original, I'm gonna do file, save as, and call this temp. Roster temp. Because I'm not going to want to keep it like this. So we're going to talk about table of contents right now. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to highlight moderator and up here to default. I have different um, headings that I can choose. So I'm going to click um, moderator and I'm going to give this a heading called Plaza Buildings. Oh, I just did something by rote that I'll tell you what I did. So Plaza Buildings, I'm, I want to highlight this word Plaza Buildings. So I can hit my arrow or cursor to the front of that, hold down the shift button, go down arrow, and then left arrow as a shortcut to highlight that text. I'm going to call that Heading 1. Go to North Plaza, down left. I'm going to highlight this as Heading 2. Down left, Heading 2. We'll call this Central Parks. 
on left. Go back to heading one. Right on left, heading two. Right on left, heading two. Down left, heading two. Okay, now here I'm going to say the others. Now I know I love you guys, but I this is just demonstration purposes. So we're going to do heading one, and going to go heading two for plaza view. And here we have um, patio homes. Like that, heading two. Looking for heading three. Um, extra staff. We'll call it that. So I'll make this heading two. And then we now have a medical service advisor on the dining club. That's Debbie Gilman. She's an actual MD, and she is helping us keep things healthy. Uh, dining services staff will make them also heading three. Okay, now I have my headings in here. Let's say that this were a very, very large document. And actually, you know what? Let's throw the... Oh, I would just about get it again. And um, I was going to do it without thinking, but I'll show you this thing. If you hold down control or in the case of Mac command tilde, it will toggle you through all of your open documents. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight this block of text, control C to copy or command C, and tilde over here. I'm just going to enter in a lot of gobbledygook building, or building. A lot of gobbledygook text, just so I can show you how the table of contents works. Okay, so we now have, um, well, we now have nine pages. So I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say insert Index and tables, index and tables, click. Okay, different types of index and tables. They have table of contents, alphabetical index, illustration. Um, they have an appendix in here. You can do a lot of things here with your table of contents. So I'm going to click OK, insert my table of contents there. And it uses these heading, heading one, two, and three, to create your table of contents. Heading one is far to the left. Heading two is indented five characters. Heading three is indented another character. Now these heading numbers, they go all the way down to heading nine, if you want. So you can have quite a detailed table of contents. Um, now, let's say things change. So I'm going to go um, click, 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 just entering in more garbage. Let's go back up to our table of contents. Now, see that um, you can see here it says to the right that I have, how do I get that to come back? You can see that I have page one of 13 comments. And you can see on this, on the table of contents, it only has nine pages. And let's look at Central Park South is currently on page eight. If I right click on this and say update table, index or table, now look at the numbers over to the right when I click on this. And I'm going to click on it in three, two, one. You can see all those table of contents numbers have updated themselves. 
So that's how you do table of contents. I am going to say file, close this document. And it's going to ask me, do you want to save this? Well, it doesn't matter because I put temp here. So I'm just going to say discard my changes. Um, that is a table of contents. <laughs> okay, so here I have... This is actually kind of funny. I'm going to, uh oh, I accidentally did Control Z, which deleted it. I mean, it's, it's a good time to talk about this. That was the undo typing, which is this little window Z. Redo typing is Shift Window Z. So if I do Shift, little flower Z, it will redo. So you can undo and you can redo if you accidentally undo, which I just did. I was trying to bring up my magnifying glass here. And that's a Mac thing. If you want to know how this magnifying glass works on Mac, um, you can ask me separately off class. And I will tell you, I don't know about Windows. So what I was chuckling at is I'm going to show you spelling in thesaurus. And you can see that they're underlined in red because I misspelled them. So I'm going to click up at the top of my document. And I'm going to click Tools, Spelling and Grammar. And here's what it gives me. It says, you have the word S-P-E-L-L-L-I-N-G. That's not in the dictionary. Well, I know it's not in the dictionary. So it says, I... Here are a couple suggestions. Spelling, spell ling, spell binding, expelling, impelling. It gives you several options. It thinks that this is the one that I probably want, and in this case, it's correct, so I'm going to click change, and it's changed. Now it says that I've also misspelled thesaurus. I honestly thought that's how you spelled thesaurus, but let's see. What it says, S A U R. It has it spelled like a dinosaur. Okay. So I, I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to say yes, fine, 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 change it. Spell check is complete, it's telling me. And you can see here that my underlining is gone and the words are spelled correctly. So let's say that's done. Okay, look over here, 8.13. For whatever reason, it's updated the time. I don't know what I did to do that. Maybe it's just update. No? Well, I don't know. Play with that one. If you figure it out, tell me. Okay, we're going to highlight this, and I'm going to just do a quick little experiment. I'm going to click on table. I'm going to say convert my text to a table. Let's see what happens. Okay, separate text at tabs, paragraphs, semicolons, or other. Let's, let's just say tabs. Play with this experiment if you want to know more about tables. I'm not going to do it right now. So I'm just going to convert this text to a table, default settings. Let's see what it does. Well, that's what I wanted it to do. So all of this text, it's take, taken it and it's converted it to a table. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to highlight these. Highlight only table rows, and I'm going to go up to table. I'm going to say I would like to split. Oh, split table or split cells. Split table will probably create two tables. I don't want to do that. I do want to split the cells. This is nice. How many cells do you want to split the text into? Let's... Let's tell it four just for kicks. And I'm going to say OK. Well, that's not what I wanted. 
So I'm going to click Control Z or Command Z and undo. I'm going to highlight that text again. <laughs> and say Tables. Well, let's see what Split Table does. Copy Heading. Custom Heading. I'm just going to say No Heading because I don't know what that means. Do anything. Table. Split table. Okay, I'll choose copy heading. Okay. So that shows you how much I know about. Oh. It did. It split the table for some reason. Anyway, if you want to know more about tables, explore it on your own. It's this button right here, table, and you have any number of different options. So I'm going to hit undo, undo, and we're back to our text. So tables, that's all I'm going to do about tables. And we're still, you can see up here it is 8. 20 on my computer and it's still saying 813. Um, if I click, if I right click and I say update it, I bet you it'll change. Fields. Okay. See, that's like it says here, bad design. But anyway, it does give you the option to input a date and a time, so that's a good thing. I'm going to call that good. Okay, appendix. Now, how to insert an appendix. Okay, let's say that I'm going to want an appendix to be on last name. So let's say I wanted to create an index of last names. I'm going to click on Andrews, double click on Andrews, go up here to insert index and tables, and I want this to be an entry. I'm going to click entry. It says, what do you want to do with this? Put it in the table of contents, alphabetical index, or some user-defined function. User defined is beyond the scope of this class line. I'm going to accept their default of an alphabetical index and click insert. Close. Now see that's now dark. That tells me that this field has been indexed. Swing them. Insert index entry insert. Delasanti. You have to do each one individually. That's inconvenient, but it's an option. Oops. Cancel. Insert. Index and tables. Entry. Insert. Close. McCoy. Index and tables. Entry. Insert. Close. Last one, Lee Weller, insert, index and tables, entry, insert, close. Okay, now, I could go through all the rest of these names, and now, let's put some space up here. Now when I go insert, oh, I guess an appendix is always at the end, isn't it? Okay. So insert, index and tables. Now, in this case, I want it to be an alphabetical index for the entire document. I'm going to click OK. And now it will give me an alphabetical index of all highlighted words, and it will tell me what page number they're on. In this case, they're all on page one. But you can see how it works. 
So this is a good way for, so let's say, writing your memoirs or even writing a book, a reference book or something. And as you type, rather than going back afterwards, as you type, enter things into the index and it will just flow. So I'm going to discard these changes. Index and rows, done. Oh, no, I didn't do that. Appendix. Appendix is done. Okay, so let's um, let's do open up a garden roster, and this is this is my um, this is my garden roster, and let's say that I want to um, say delete. A couple different ways that you can get messed up here. Oh, this doesn't work. This is spreadsheet that handles it differently. Okay. So inserting and deleting rows in a table. Let's let's go ahead and convert this to a table again, just briefly. Table and refer text to table. And let's say, yeah. oh, okay. so let's say that, um, to think alphabetically here. Let's say that I wanted to insert my name in between page and spelling. I would go insert, oops, table insert. Insert is in for your document. Here, this, we're specifically in a table, so you have to go table, insert a row. How many do you want to? Let's, let's insert three rows. And now my cursor was, I believe, on page numbers. We'll find out soon enough. So you have to remember where your cursor was when you started this. I'm going to say put three rows after. I could put it before or after. I'm going to put three rows after wherever my cursor was. And indeed, I was on page number. So let's say... Um, Robert, tab down, enter, forward. Now, I hit um, enter, and that created another bullet point, backspace. Well, I did once I hit this, and Salinas, whatever Salinas is. Anyway, that's how you insert, how you delete a row, is highlight the row, table, delete a row. And it's that easy. I'm going to hit undo a couple times till I get back to my text. Way back. Come on, there we go. And that's done. It's toolbars. I'm just going to talk briefly about them. So view toolbars. You have all kinds of different toolbars that you can put up on top of your page here that you're working with. If you are doing a lot with media or pictures or formulas, you can say, okay, I want to do, give me the picture toolbar. And I click that, and it's right here. This is the picture toolbar. Now, that will disappear, and it'll be gone. But if I click and drag it over to here, it will become part of my permanent toolbar up here. So that's how you do toolbars. I'm close this, discard, and here we back, are back to the office. So uh, in a nutshell, that wraps up the third 
class and the word processing portion of OpenOffice. Next week, um, I showed you just a glance at a couple spreadsheets. We're going to show how to create a basic spreadsheet and how to do some formulas so you can actually use this to balance your checkbook or track your Beatitudes expenses or any number of things. We're going to do a lot of numbers. Spreadsheets are great for numbers. We're going to do a little bit with date functions. The class after that, we're going to get into conditional formatting. Um, I will be showing you my COVID research, and when trends go up, it shows as red. When trends go down, it shows as green. We like green. Um, so I'll show you conditional formatting, and uh, in the first class, I'm going to show you how to merge cells together and make headings across other cells, how to have automatically numbered cells, how to change dates, things like that. So it'll be, it'll be a fast-paced, good class. Now, I know that I've presented a lot to you here, but you can review it on your own time. If you go out to the website, www.arizonaclass.com, and click on Beatitudes Classes, it will allow you to review these videos as many times as you want at your own speed. You can pause and replay. Um, it's a great way to learn something. So thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure, and we will talk soon. Bye. You can drop off on a Monday, a Monday, a Monday is very, very good. Or you can drop off on a Tuesday, a Tuesday, a Tuesday, in fact, I wish you would. Or you can drop off on a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday is best. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. Most any day, you can be my guest. Any day you say, but the day of rest. Drop off the day that you think is best. Only stay away, a polite request. Oh, you can drop off on a cool day, a hot day, a wet day, whichever day you choose. Or you can drop off on a gray day, a May day, a pay day, and see if I refuse. And if you make it on a bleak day, a freak day, a weak day, why well, you can be my guest. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. Beatitudes does the best they can any day they can a woman or man it is the best all throughout the week keep you safe they seek so we ask you please Tell your family come on Monday, a Monday, a Monday is very, very good. And you can get groceries on Tuesday, a Tuesday, a Tuesday, in fact I wish you would. And Amazon can come on Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday is best. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. 
But never, never on a Sunday, a Sunday, a Sunday, cause that's a day of rest. Woof, woof, woof. So I've had a lot of people telling me that they had forgotten about the class or missed it or something like that and wanted to know if they could see it again. The answer is yes you can. If you go out to the website www.arizonaclass.com all of the Tech Talk classes are out there. We have uh, how to buy groceries from Fry's Grocery. Safeway is a similar process. I just happened to use Fry's. And we are allowed to go pick them up. We're not allowed to go into the store, but with this system, they will bring it out and put it in the trunk of your car. Um, we are just now working on the open office videos. Those will all be out there. A, there is a Zoom installation and tutorial that's out there. There are classes on iPhones and Androids both, how to do more effective Google searches on the internet, how to use Messenger and hook up Amazon Fire TV, and um, that's about it for now. But please feel free to go out to www.arizonaclass.com and you can see all of these videos and any future recordings. Um, and view them at your leisure. So anyway, thank you for your interest.